boys and girls. Welcome back from your long weekend. I hope you enjoyed your weekend and had thought about Martin Luther King Jr. on Monday because that was the reason that we were out. So today you should be starting in your packet on Tuesday, January 19, 2021. So make sure you're turned to that page. We skipped Monday. Today you're going to read this comprehension check. It's called The Coldest Place on Earth actually about Antarctica. It gives you lots of great facts about Antarctica and actually when I read this I learned a lot of things I didn't know about Antarctica. So hopefully when you read through this you learn some things about Antarctica. So let's go ahead and before we start we're going to a number of the paragraphs because I find that helpful when we're looking for the answers. So this is number one. Sorry let me get it on pen. Paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and paragraph four. So when you're doing this, maybe you should try to number yours so it helps you find the answers because I may give you a few hints here. So number one said, how did scientists measure the coldest temperature on earth? Make sure you go back and you look. What did they use? Because I honestly thought that they were gonna say a thermometer, but guess what? I was wrong. Because as I read through the paragraphs, I found out that is not what they used to measure it. So you're gonna reread and find out what did they use to measure the temperature in Alaska to find out how cold it was. So if you read in paragraph two, you will find the answer for that. So you're gonna look back at two. On question two, it says, what is the first paragraph mainly about? So of course we're talking about that first paragraph. So we're gonna look back in paragraph one and you're gonna tell me what the main idea of paragraph one is. Then go to question three. It says, what comparison does the text make to help readers understand how cold minus 144 degrees Fahrenheit is? So you're gonna go back in there and you're gonna look, I believe, at paragraph two to find out what they compared it to. And then on number four, it says, why can't people breathe air at minus 144 degrees? And if you read in paragraph three, you will find out why people can't breathe that air, what happens to them. It's very interesting. Didn't know that. So go ahead and read The Coldest Place on Earth and use this to help you find the answers. And Miss Free will speak more on this if you watch the second video. Okay, on the next page, we're doing three digit addition with regrouping and we're only doing it one time. So you'll notice that on this, that you have the boxes, the ones, tens, and hundreds to help you out. We're gonna remember that you always, always start in the ones place. So everyone is gonna start right here in the ones place. We have an example done for you. So you're gonna start right here in the ones place. If you have a number line, you're gonna use your number line to help you add. If you have a touch master, you're gonna use that to help you add. So you start in the ones place and you start with four plus nine. And you think, hmm, what is four plus nine? If you're not sure, you're gonna start on four and you're gonna count up the nine and you should get 13. And you can see that a little 13 is drawn right here. And that means you have three ones and one ten. So you're gonna have to take that one ten and regroup it and put it above the tens place. Now we're going over to the tens place and I'm going to say zero plus two. That's pretty easy because if you have nothing and you add two, you get two. And then you have to remember to add that one at the top end. So two plus one is three. And that's how they got the three. Then there's nothing to carry up here into the hundreds place. So we're not regrouping at all here because there are no hundreds in this number. So we just do five plus one equals six and we get the answer 633. So make sure that you go through, check if you need to regroup. It even gives you these nice little boxes to kind of give you guidance for whether you need to, which place value you need to regroup in. If you have any questions about that, you can always message your teacher and get a hold of them or come to your Zoom. On this page, we're reviewing the oo sound. So we have U E U which we worked on last week. We have E-W-U that we worked on the previous week, and then we add U-I-U. So we're gonna go through, and 
we're going to look at the words down here, and this is a sword. Now, if you don't have glue or scissors at home, no worries. I can't cut this out of the board, so I'm just going to write an example in. So let's look at this first word. So we have suit, suit. So I'm going to look and I'm going to decide, is this a U-E word, a U or E-W or a U-I? And if you look in the center of this word, you have U-I. So I'm going to write that right here under the U-I column, suit. We've done lots of swords through this year and you've done it in previous grades. So this should go fairly quickly for you. It should be very easy to sort because you can see the different patterns in the words. So if you have questions about this page, come to your classroom Zooms or get contact with your teacher. This is our last page for, the, for Tuesday and it's your last writing, I believe. And this one is also a sequencing one and it's, the title is How to Brush Your Teeth. So I believe you all do this every day. So this should be an easy one to write about. You're going to use your transitional words, first, next, then, and last. If you wanna use those other words also after, finally, you can are more than welcome to. Also remember to add adjectives, things that give more details about what you're writing, because you know we've been working a lot on adjectives in second grade. So we wanna make sure we're using those when we're writing. So you're gonna look at these pictures, and remember if you don't have scissors and glue, don't worry about cutting them out and gluing them. Just go through and number them one, two, three, and four, and then go through and write a great sentence. We like to see at least seven words because most of you are seven or older now. Some of you are even eight. So try to write seven words for each sentence using your transitional words and your adjectives. Um, and if you need more room, you can always go to the back of the packet and write back there because I don't think we added an extra page to this one. So if you have any questions, join your Zooms. We love to see your faces at Zoom, so make sure you come visit your teacher. And if you can't do that, at least message us and let us know that you have a concern. Okay guys, have a great day, bye.